everyone welcome back in this video we are going to talk about bucketing so bucketing is another interesting technique to be able to divide your data sets into more manageable chunks and this division of data is simply based on the data's hash value now more details on the hash values coming up but this in turn is going to increase or basically improve the performance of your spark queries queries that are going to involve operations like filter aggregation or join right so let's look into a few examples to better understand this okay so let's imagine you have these two data sets the first one is called order and the second one is called product and as the name implies the first one basically contains details about orders which customer placed an order when did he place an order which product does it contain and what is the total amount of the order right and the products data set over here basically contains details of all the products right details like what is the product name which category does it belong to what brand is, does it belong to and what is the price of that product right now let's imagine that you had to perform a few operations on these data sets right you had to perform a few operations on let's say the orders data set and those operations can be filter or it can be an aggregation like a group by or a join right so it can simply be either of these three operations so let's understand how filter is going to work let's take the example of a filter right so let's say you are going to do a filter operation which looks something like this you want to filter a product id from this orders data set where product id equals some number right now the question over here is that how would you store the data set right how would you store the data set so that this operation becomes very efficient the filter operation is very efficient right so let's look at a few options right the first option that you have is store the data set as it is you get the raw file as one big chunk and you store as it is now the reason why this is bad is because you what you essentially do is that you end up scanning all of the records in the data set right so this basically goes through all of the records and then looks for a product id where product product id equals x and then it gives you the row right now this is not a very efficient approach because this scans all the rows now let's look at the second approach the second approach that you can think of is partitioning so for those of you who are not very well versed with partitioning i've explained partitioning in a lot of details in the previous video so So please go ahead and have a look at it so if we were to partition this data set by the product id right because our search criteria is on the product id right so let's say if we were to partition by the product id we understand that this product id is a high cardinality column what we mean by a high cardinality column is that it contains a lot of unique element right a lot of unique products as we see over here right so if we partition by the product id what we are going to end up with is several partition right and these several partition is going to lead to the small file problem so uh, so there are going to be several partitions of small sizes and it would lead to the small size problem so therefore partitioning is also not a very good approach to solve this problem now the third approach that we can think of is bucketing so what we essentially do in bucketing is that we divide all of the rows into certain buckets right so let's imagine that we were dividing it into four buckets so we basically created four buckets and we divided it into 
four bucket and let me number them as 0 1 2 and 3 right so the logic that is going to be followed in order to decide which row over here goes to which bucket is simply the hash of the key that we want to bucket by so in this case we want to bucket by product id so we are simply going to do hash of product id right and the hash of product ID is going to give me a very large integer. Okay. Now, to make sure that it falls within these four buckets, within 0, 1, 2, and 3, I'm simply going to do a mod 4. And here, 4 is basically the number of buckets. Right? So now, just for simplicity, we assume that hash of product ID is simply equal to the product ID. Just for simplicity. So, in order to understand which bucket these rows are going to go into we simply do for this bucket we do a 22 mod 4 which is going to give you 2 right so this is going to go to bucket number 2 this is going to go to bucket number 2 right similarly this is going to give you 3 this also is going to give you 3 this is going to give you 3 this is going to give you 1 0 2 and 2 right so this is going to be 10 this is going to be 24, this is going to be 19, 11 and 87, right? And the last one over here is going to be 9. So this is how your record would fall into these buckets. Now whenever you have to look for a particular product, the simplest thing that you do over here is you simply hash that product ID and do a mod 4. So basically, let's say if this was 22, you do a hash of 22, which is equal to 22, mod 4, which is equal to 2. So you will basically be redirected to this bucket over here, right? So what you've essentially done is that you've reduced the search space. You don't have to scan this bucket. You don't have to scan this and this bucket as well. The only bucket that you're left to scan is this one, right? So this essentially is going to save you a lot of time and it is going to make your filter query very efficient. Now we are going to look at another operation which is the join operation, right? And the question basically remains the same. How are you going to store these two data sets, the orders and product data set? So how are you going to store these two data sets? so that the join happens in the most efficient manner possible right so let's explore a few options and the first option as we also did last time was we keep the data as it is right so let's imagine that you got a large bulky file from the source for both orders and products and you store it as it is as one large bulky file and you would simply read it and when you're going to do a join, it is going to go through the three steps, which is a shuffle, sort, and then finally the merge, right? And shuffle here is a very costly operation, right? So it is going to basically redistribute your data, which is going to make sure that the same keys reside on the same partition, right? So this is a very costly operation. And basically it is going to read up your whole data set so this is not a very good approach so this is not a very good approach right because it involves all the costly steps now the second approach that you might think of is partitioning right. for partitioning because we want to join these two data sets on the common column which is the product id the product id over here we would preferably want to partition these two data sets on the product id right which is on this column now a very important point to note is that this is a high cardinality column product id is a high cardinality column simply meaning that Product ID has a lot of unique values. This column over here has a lot of unique values, right? So essentially, when you partition by the product ID, 
it is going to create a lot of small files right and this is going to end up in the small file problem small file problem so what i want to say here is that if a column is of high cardinality partitioning may not be the best approach to solve this problem now the third one is of course bucketing so what we can do over here is that we can simply create four buckets so we create four buckets and we are going to say that all of the records in the orders is going to go to either of these four buckets right so first we are bucketing the orders data frame and later we would do similar for the product data frame right so we are going to put all of these rows in either one of these buckets that you see over here right and the logic that is going to govern which row is going to which bucket is simply the hash of whatever column that we want to bucket by which is in this case the product id and we are going to do a mod of the number of buckets right the reason why we do a mod of the number of bucket because hash of the product id is going to give us a large number right which may which may not fall between 0 to 3 these four buckets that you see over here right so in order to make sure that it falls in either of these four buckets we do a mod 4 so for simplicity let's assume that the hash of product id equals the product id itself right so for this one it is going to be 22 mod 4 which is going to be 2 so 22 is going to go over here this row this row over is going to end up over here similarly this one would end up being 19 mod 4 which is going to be 3 this is going to be 3 3 3 1 0 2 1 2 right so the way you're going to get all of these records in the bucket is simply going to be like this 22 22 10 for 3 this is going to be 19 11 87 this is going to be 9 and this is going to be 24 so this is how your data is going to go inside of the bucket now whenever we are going to do a join right first first of all we do a we do a bucketing for the first uh, data set and then we would do a similar one for this this one also right so similar buckets would be created and let me just move this over here similar buckets would be created and then you would see all of this all of the products over here to be going to these bucket so for example this would go to bucket number three bucket number three bucket number three one zero two and two right so 22 is going to go over here 10 is going to go over here 19 11 87 this one is going to be over here and 24 is going to. so this is going to be for the products and this is going to be for the orders right now when we want to do a join these two buckets are going to reside on the same executor it is going to be bucketed in such a way such that these buckets which have the same hash of product id mod 4 they are going to go to the same executor right and the moment they fall on the same executor the join the join operation can simply be performed right so you can simply do a join operation between these two the reason for that is that you have this key over here and this key over here and these key match and therefore a join operation can be performed similarly for this one similarly for this one and similarly for this one so what we've essentially seen is that after bucketing the data has come in a shuffled format the same keys are now residing in one of the buckets on the same machine right so the only step that you need to do is the sort and the merge the shuffle step as we saw earlier over here 
earlier over here is already been done by bucketing so you only need to do the sort and the merge now a very important point to note is that if you're doing this once it may not be very helpful but if you're repeating it multiple times if you're repeating the join multiple times in most of the other joins you avoid the shuffle completely you just go ahead and do these two steps right so this is how bucketing is going to enormously speed up your join let me summarize all of this with an image so we created four buckets and those four buckets are simply the ones over here 0 1 2 and 3 and all of these rows over here basically ended up in either of these one buckets right so this is the first bucket for orders this is the second one this is the third one and this is the fourth one and the way we the way we determine the number last time this would be simply 2 2 2 0 1 3 3 and 3 so for 3 you would simply see all of the rows over here right 19 11 and 87 so this is the bucket for orders and simply sim simply again for products 19 11 and 87 these would also go to the same bucket over here right and now after they reside on the same executor they already come in a shuffled format and you can simply do a sort and a merge of these of these two the rows that you see over here right so again uh this is just to summarize uh, how joins would be performed in case of bucketed data frame now the last operation that we have to discuss is a group by operation and group by is also going to be very similar in the way how data is going to be stored actually there's going to be no difference the moment you bucket your data frame right your data for which the hash of the column that is the product id mod 4 is going to be the same it is going to go to those buckets right so wherever this is 2 it goes to this bucket wherever is 0 it goes to this bucket right now this is also a preliminary step whenever you do a group by so whenever group by happens we first do a shuffle and we make sure that the same keys reside on the same partition on the same machine right now once that is done we simply do the aggregation so for example let's say if we wanted to calculate the total sales by the product id right so we wanted to calculate the total sales that is the total amount by the product id now we know that all of the products which have product id 22 are going to reside in this bucket on this executor so this part this part that you see over your shuffle is already done right this part over here now the only step that is left is that you have to aggregate so we would simply end up doing a sum of this over here So for twenty-two, you would do a sum of these two, and for ten, you would do a sum of this one, right? And you would get the final answer. So again, this is how bucketing can help you speed up your record. Now let's have a look at a few scenarios on how join would behave when operating on two bucketed data set, right? So let's say that you have data set one, and then you have data set two. and we want to basically have a look at the performance so data set 1 is bucketed and it is bucketed into x number of buckets right and data set 2 is also bucket bucketed and it is bucketed into x number of buckets again so this because it is already bucketed into the same number of buckets is not going to involve a shuffle whenever a join is going to happen it's not going to involve a shuffle which is a very good scenario for us right so now let's look at another case where both the data sets are bucketed but one is bucketed into x bucket the other one is bucketed into y bucket right so in this case one of the data set is going to be shuffled data set is shuffled 
so basically for example let's say y would be shuffled into x bucket so that the join can then happen right so this is also not a very bad scenario because you're still using one of the bucketed data set you're still using bucketing in one of the data set right this is still okay now the third one is the data set is bucketed it is bucketed into x buckets and it is bucketed by the column product id the second one is that it is also bucketed bucketed into x buckets and bucketed by the product id but when we are doing a join we are doing the join by a column other than product id we are not using the column product id to do the join so this is not a very good scenario because it would involve a full shuffle the storage structure by which by which we are storing the data on the disk which is bucketing into x buckets by the product id is not helpful for us anymore so this was involve a full shuffle so this is not a very good scenario that we want to be in so it is very important to keep these few scenarios when operating and when doing joins on bucketed data frame right okay so in the previous few examples you must have seen that i always divided my data sets into four buckets right so a possible question that you may have is that why did i always choose the number 4 so this number 4 was just taken as an example there was no rationale or logic behind choosing that number but there is actually a formula that you could use in order to decide what should be the optimal number of buckets that you should split your data into right so let's say the size of your data set whichever data set you want to bucket size of your data set is basically x right and the optimal bucket size the optimal bucket size is somewhere between 128 to 200 megabytes so you could choose any value between this range right therefore the number of bucket is going to be the size of your data set divided by the optimal bucket size right divided by the optimal bucket so let's assume that your data size is 1 gigabyte so for simplicity 1000 megabyte and the optimal bucket size that i'm choosing let's choose the upper limit over here which is 200 megabytes so i'm going to end up with five bucket so this would simply mean that i should be creating five bucket for this data set of size x another possible question that you may have is that once you've read in your data frame right how do you determine the size of your data set right how do we need to determine what should be the logic that we we should follow in order to determine the size of the data set and here i found a very interesting which basically tells us how to estimate the size of a data set and this is the formula that it uses basically it multiplies n into v into w divided by 1024 to the power 2 this is basically to convert it into um i think to convert it into megabyte yeah basically to convert it into megabyte but basically what this formula tells you is that it takes into consideration the number of records that you have the number of variable which is the number of columns and approximate size of the column this is what it means average within bytes of a variable so approximate size of a column so if it's a small integer it's going to be the width is going to be 1 the width is going to be 1 over here if it's a medium size to a large size integer the size is going to be between 2 and 4 and for floats and string this is how you calculate the width so using this you'll be able to get the size of your data set right and 
it is going to scan your data set at least once because you need the number n which is the number of record but again this scan is just going to be one time if you're going to do the join subsequently a lot of time this is just a one time operation and after that your data set is going to be bucketed which you can use multiple times and the shuffle need not happen so that is how it's going to okay happen. so now let's see all of the concepts in action so here i'm going to simply read simply create a spark session and as we discussed in the examples earlier we had two data sets one was the order data set and the other one was a products data set right and similar to that we have those two data sets over here and let's have a look at those two data sets right so if i were to look at orders orders basically contain the order id uh, the product that was ordered the customer who ordered it the quantity and the total amount right similarly you have a products data set and let's have a look at how it looks like so it basically contain the product id the name category brand price and all of that right now let's say we were to do a join between these two data sets as we tried to do earlier in in our example let's see how it would behave if those two data sets were not bucketed right so the code for this would simply look like this you join df orders with df products simply based on product id and this is an inner join right so now let's have a look at how the physical plan is going to look like so what you would essentially see here is that we are doing a file scan and then we are making sure that the join column is not null and then the data is shuffled right just to make sure that the same keys reside on the same partition and then all of the data in the same partition is sorted and finally merged so this step is repeated for the other data frame and then finally a sort merge join is going to happen so essentially what we want to understand here is that we are doing two expensive shuffles the first shuffle is over here and the second shuffle is over here right so this is the case when the two data frames are not bucketed now let's bucket the two data frame right and the code for that is simply the data frame name dot write dot bucket by and inside of bucket by we simply specify the column by which we want to bucket by and the number of bucket so if we want to create four buckets we simply specify four buckets over here right and then we simply save as table so this is saved using the save as table command and let me just remove this which i created earlier and let me run this again so as you see over here it creates a folder called spark warehouse and inside of it i have another folder which is called products bucketed which contains my bucketed data set right let me also do it for the order data set and now you see that i have two data sets which have been both bucketed yeah so now let's go ahead and do the join between these two bucketed data sets and see how they behave so i'm going to use spark.table in order to read the bucketed data set because it was saved as a table over here and similarly i'll do it for both the data sets right and i'm going to do a join between the two bucketed data set and for that i'll use df order bucketed dot join product bucketed on the product id and this is an inner join so now let's have a look at the physical plan and observe the differences so what you see over here is we've done a file scan of the products bucketed data set the second one is we've made sure that the product id that is the join column is not null and then you see sorting of the join column what we have what we are not able to find here surprisingly is the exchange the exchange has vanished right so you saw an exchange over here and over here before the sorting step right and over here you don't see an exchange we directly go to the sort step so that simply means 
that we've avoided shuffling in case of joining bucketed data frame right because the data is already in a kind of a shuffled format right so this is how bucketing is going to be very helpful for you it is going to help you avoid the costly shuffle yeah now let's have a look at aggregation right and we would follow a similar approach let's first do it for a data frame without bucketing and then we would do it for bucketing so let's say the use case is you want to simply understand the sales for each of the product so you have this data frame over here and here you have the product id and you have the total amount so you want to calculate the total sales for a given product so what you would essentially do is you would take the orders data frame and you would simply group by product id and then aggregate the total amount right very simple so now let's go ahead and run this and see how the plan looks like so we first do a file scan and then we do a local sum and then the data is shuffled and then finally we do a global sum right so this is the file scan this is the local uh, or the partial sum and then the data is shuffled and we finally do a global sum which is going to give me the total sales per product id so just in case you are not able to understand this feel free to refer to my spark query plan and spark dag videos and all of this has been explained in great detail so now what you effectively see over here is we are doing an exchange has partitioning that is a shuffle is happening right so now let's go ahead and run it with a bucketed data frame so we basically take the df orders bucketed which we bucketed earlier over here this one this one over here and we read it over here so let's go ahead and run this so now what you effectively see is that the shuffle has completely vanished you've got rid of the shuffling right so you see a local local sum and then a global sum right because you can have like several partitions on the same executor so a sum is performed for each of those partitions and then a final sum is formed right i i i should say uh, for each of those buckets instead of partitions right so again this is how bucketing can help you avoid costly shuffles now let's look at another concept another interesting concept called bucket pruning and this is very uh, this comes hand in hand with uh, the filter operation that we um, discussed earlier so what it effectively helps you do is that it helps you narrow down to the particular bucket that you want to filter by it helps you select that bucket and basically remove all the other prune all the other buckets right so let's say i want to repeat the same operation that we've done over here aggregate um, the sales by product id but in this case i just want to calculate the sales for one of the product that is product id equals one right now we know for a fact that this product id equals one is going to reside in one of the buckets and all of the rules for the product id equals 1 is going to go to that same bucket because the logic that we saw earlier was hash of something like this hash hash of the product id mod the number of buckets which is mod 4 right we assume that we had four buckets right so all of them would go to the same bucket because the product id is the same yeah so let me go ahead and run this and what you would essentially see over here is that it has selected only one out of four buckets as we saw in the earlier example right when we started the video so all of all of the other bucket that is three buckets in this case were not scanned we only picked up that one bucket which belonged to the product id equal to one and we ran this query so again this is how uh, bucketing can be very helpful in speeding up your queries, speeding up your operations like join, filter, and group by. Right. 
So I hope all of that makes sense and it was easy to understand for you. It's great to see that you've completed the full video. If you found value, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you again for watching.